In Nancy Drew, Danger by Design, there's a puzzle to paint the Mona Lisa. I figured, why not do this in real life? Let's paint the Mona Lisa. I have uh, the screenshot from the game right here as a reference. So we're going to start with uh, black, just plain black, because that's the easy one, because that's her hair. So her hair is going to be this big thing. I'm just going to fill it in, fill it in. Pretty simple. Of course, all the outline lines are black, so you don't really have to worry too much about going over them. Oh, I'm already messing up. Okay. Um, if you're messing up like me, maybe you need to switch to like a smaller brush. This is actually a somewhat large brush I'm using here. Ooh, that looks good. Looks good there. It's basically just painting by numbers is what this is. Okay. Just want to make sure she has nice curly hair right there. I, I don't know how to hold my canvas and paint at the same time. I mean, hold my easel. What is this thing called again? Okay, I'm maybe not the greatest artist in the world. Palette, that's what you call it. Okay, so... Um, Holding my palette and painting at the same time might be a little bit difficult. So I'm using acrylics. One little trick you can do is uh, just use water, just use water all over the board. That uh, makes your acrylics um, move a bit more uh, glidingly. Is that even a word? Um, I'll try to show that off in a moment. Yeah, see, see. so for these thin parts, you'd either have to switch to a thin brush or just turn your brush sideways. So instead of painting like this up and down, just paint a little sideways right over there. And there we go. Here, here's her hair. Looks nice. Looks nice. All right. So the next thing, um, I'm just dipping my paintbrush here in this little cup of water. It's kind of nasty and disgusting water, actually. Um, don't try to drink it. That would be a terrible idea. Yeah, I totally misjudged how much uh, black paint we needed for for her hair. Well, let me show off that uh, water trick I was trying to talk about. Just uh, dip a, just a plain brush in water. Just kind of rub it all over your canvas. Yeah, the water's already kind of dirty because I was using it to clean the black brush, so... Maybe that was a dumb move on my part. Anyway, you'll see it makes the paint more glidey. Okay, so I've got a, a phthalo green here, which is, um, that's artist for dark green. I don't know what a phthalo is, but, uh, yeah, we'll do the dark green here. And here, let me show off. See how glidey, see how it's a little different? Yeah, yeah, see? looks different. I, I like doing that for uh, when I'm doing like skies and stuff like that. Just doing that little trick. It just makes the skies look a little bit different. Because you know when you look at the sky it's not all the exact same shade of blue, right? There are, there are variations. And it's a lot easier to just do that as opposed to, you know, mixing some white, mixing some dark. I've got plenty of black though. I could easily mix in some darks here to get darker areas on the dress and stuff. Alrighty, so dress and the hair are the two really big areas in this painting. Just paint all over them. Shouldn't be too hard. It's kind of hard at the bottom where the, uh, you know, I've got the edge of my canvas. I'm sort of fighting. Alrighty, that should be it. Cool. All right. And then the other green I've got is just a light green, just a lighter green. So I'll just take this lighter green, use the exact same brush. I think I cleaned it off well enough. Hopefully I did. And then it looks like green is just everywhere else on her dress. Everywhere else on her dress is green. Lighter green, I should say. Yep, there we go. Works just fine. I'm kind of going over to the lines. My mistake. It's okay. So I did those lines on Sharpie. So 
it, it'll be super easy once the painting's dry just to go back and redo those those uh, black lines and sharpie if I feel so inclined. Okay, got the green here. Another good thing about having like the the water on on the canvas that makes it a slightly easier to like take off paint if you accidentally made uh, too much paint there because it, it changes the consistency of the paint so the paint is thinner. Of course, if you're using oils, you would have to use paint thinner or um, there's other stuff they use. I just forget what it's called at this moment. Okay, so I think those are the uh, greens. Looks like I messed up a little bit um, on the edges. So I'm actually gonna have to just use a smaller brush here. I'm gonna try to use uh, the smaller brush from here on out, but as you can see, there's a lot of painting that I have to fill in. So I'll just use the smaller brush just to fill in some of these fine details around the sides. Just fill in any of those spots of blank canvas that I see, basically. All right, so that fills in the uh, darker area. Clean off the uh, brush a bit. And clean off any of the uh, holes in the lighter green area. One right over here, which we want to fill. The worst thing that happens is, you know, like you try to fill a hole and then you make a mistake. Like right there, I try to fill, uh, you know, try to fill a hole and then all of a sudden I've got the light green and the dark green. Then I have to cover up that light green. Oh, oh no, I made a mistake here. Um, dark green over there. It's not too noticeable, but anyway, you know, I'm going to stop picking at it. <laughs> that's, that's enough. Okay, so next we're going to go with uh, this thing around her hair. I don't know what it is. Is she like wearing a hood or something? She's just wearing a hoodie or something. Okay, so this is going to be uh, just your basic brown. So I'm gonna use uh, Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber, a very popular shade of brown. Okay, so I'm just gonna splat some Burnt Umber there. Gonna use a lot of it because there's a lot of area in this painting that needs Burnt Umber. So uh, this area, it's kind of weird that part of her face is burnt umber, but that is how the uh, painting goes. That's how they did it in the video game. Uh, another technique, see, I'm kind of having trouble here. Oh no, ah, er, got some right there. Yeah, so this leads to two, two painting things. Uh, uh, what's the rule for acrylics? So. There's a rule about painting um, uh, lighter colors first or darker colors first. I totally forget which one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whoopsie daisy. And also her eyes. Her eyes are brown as well. So I kind of messed up on her eyes. This one eye on the right is um, not the exact same shape as the one on the left. But that's okay. That's okay. I'll just say she was squinting her eye there. Something like that. There we go. There we go. There we go. And, uh, and everything else over here is brown. So over here on the side is brown. So I'm a little nervous because I just painted that area black. So it's like, will the black get mixed up with the brown or not? Uh, I don't know. So if that's something you're really worried about, what you should do is take a break in between um, various colors. Yeah, you know, probably the smart way to do it is uh, you let the paint dry. You know, I, I fill in the brown area, then I let the paint dry, then I fill in the area right next to it, then I let the paint dry. Of course, if you do that, it's a little harder to do uh, those little touch-ups. Where it's like, oh no, I'll just 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 throw in a little bit of paint there. It's like, well, you can't do that if the paint's already dried. Um, but you can see the paint on my uh, palette, even though it's dried here, it's, it's still got enough to it that I could repaint with it if I had to. And there you can see. Okay, I uh, let me paint with this. I'll just paint with the end of my brush. There we go. Okay, so that covers up that little mistake right there. Cool.
So we learned how to do that. All right, and then just brown all the way around. All the way around. I like how this is just as thick as my brush is, just as wide as my brush is, I should say. So that makes it way, way easier to just paint in that area. I like that a lot. That's that's some good painting right there. All right, and then I'll just use the uh, back side of my brush to fill in a little gap. And there we go. Those are all the uh, brown. Oh, so now I got paint on my hands. That was a dumb move. I should have realized I was going to get paint on my hands doing that. Well, I've got this rag I used to uh, clean up the old paints, so that's what I'll be doing. Okay, so now we get the really fun part. Also, the really dangerous part, uh, we have to do some color mixing because these colors, uh, I mean, these colors are pretty standard. Green, light green, burnt umber is really standard, also black. But then the other shades, uh, you'll notice, are really weird ones here. We've got like light yellow and then some grayish yellow, and then like a light brownish. I, I don't even know how I'm going to do that. Um... Let me see, so I've already got my burnt umber. I've already got the brown. It looks like I need to get it to like an orange consistency. So, oh, do I actually have it? Yellow ochre, let's see what yellow ochre looks like. So yellow ochre, I'll put it next to my brown just in case I have to mix it with the brown. But the yellow ochre, ooh, ooh, looks perfect. Okay, so yellow ochre is gonna be the, uh, the other darker color. Oh, we've got two other darker colors, but you know what I mean, right? Maybe, I don't know. Well, you'll see what I mean soon enough. I'll just take my yellow ochre here, get it all over my brush, and then start painting. Yeah, I'm being extra careful around the edges there. And then for the center, I'll just sort of go wild, like... Yeah. So naturally turning the brush. I know some artists can do this, like, woo, that. But I'm just trying to be extra careful. I can't make really haphazard stuff. So you can see um, paint's coming it's coming off my brush. I just reload it. It's really simple. La, 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 la. Let me see how that looks. Oh, that looks good. You can kind of see like the pencil lines all over the canvas. So that's what I used in order to uh, get the outline on the canvas. I used the grid technique on the uh, original picture, the original screenshot from the, the Nancy Drew game. But I'm not good at erasing things. I'm not good at erasing pencil marks. I'm actually not that good at the, the grid technique either. So you see I've got like stray lines in the middle of nowhere. Um, that was me messing up the grid technique. You're supposed to draw straight lines. Just a straight line from the top to the bottom. But it, it, it didn't turn out that way. Um, oh my gosh, I realized I just messed up. Give me a second, everybody. Whoops. The video game actually has an extra line <laughs> coming from the side of her eye going down like that. Just a little wiggly, squiggly line. So I'm going to have to make this up. So it goes, it goes down and then a bump and it sort of comes here. So it's sort of level with, uh, sort of like here, like here. This is about as far as it goes and it's about down. So something like that. And so now I have to, now that I've made that line, I have to try to make it fit the painting. And I'm going to try not to get paint all over my hands while I'm doing this. There we go. And then I assume this line is to highlight her cheekbones? Eh. How's that? Looks good? Maybe? Makes her look like the Phantom of the Opera? <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> anyway. 
And that is a uh, color number. I mean, that's the second place where we're going to use this. What color? Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. Yeah, this is yellow ochre deep, so it's a darker yellow ochre. I don't know. I'm not sure what your ochre is. I know there's multiple types of ochre too. I think there's like red ochre, maybe. No, no, no. It's yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. I, I think this is like an off yellow ochre. It's, it's got to be darker than normal yellow, cause. Well, no, the other yellow is cad yellow, and now I've got, like, green paint all over the side of the brush, and I haven't been using green paint in a while. I don't know where it came from. Of course, now I'm worried that it's just going to be super messed up because that Sharpie mark is very, very fresh. And, yeah. Oh, well. Okay, so we've got that part of her face. Now we need, um... Oh, did I mess up? Are her lips? Nope, nope, nope. Her lips are not the same color. Okay. So her lips, and uh, the area next to her lips, as you can see, are uh, this little color, this color. So it looks like a reddish brown. Do I even have anything like that? So I've got the brown. Um, you know what? Let's just experiment. Let's go crazy. I just have the yellow ochre and uh, the brown, right? The burnt umber, sorry. So let's see what happens when I uh, mix those two. So I'm only gonna do a little bit. I'm gonna try only doing a little bit because I'm pretty sure the dark brown is gonna overwhelm the uh, other color. So I mix them up, I mix them up real nice like this and I just get kind of mud. Um, kind of mud, uh, let's get it reddish by putting in some burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Come on, fall off, fall off, fall off. Fall. Yeah, I only wanted to drop there. Didn't want to waste the paint that much because it's only going to be a little area. I mean, her lips are not that huge. Okay, so I'm just sort of mixing those three together. And that sort of looks like it's a little too dark. Um, imagine I need to mix in more white or uh, something, but I'm just gonna leave it like that rather than take forever mixing my paints. So it's just gonna be her lips, and then it's gonna be the uh, right-hand side of her face. So like here. Wow, this brush isn't working at all. Look, see how it's all stuck together? All the things are stuck together. Come on, come on, loosen it up, loosen it up. There we go. I want a loosey-goosey brush. Loose bristles. Yeah, and you can see it's not exactly the uh, shade, but it, it, it's close. It's very close. Especially when in the lighter part, it looks way closer than in the uh, darker area. And let's see, this just goes all the way under her chin. Alrighty. Got her chin done. Her chin is the same color as her lips, so I don't, don't know why. Great. And then with uh, her lips, see I've got those little lines on the side of her lips to indicate the difference between her top lip and her bottom lip. Um, Mona Lisa has a very specific smile, so I kind of messed up on that. So those little lines to indicate the top and the bottom, they should be a little curved to indicate that she's smiling, but you'll notice she doesn't have much of a smile. Yeah. She just has a very sly smile. That's that's how the painting works. And so another way to do that is you probably, um, her upper lip is too big. It needs to be smaller. So that way um, when these sides come up, it's more apparent that she's smiling. But it's hard to do that because it's, it's a very sly smile. It's not a big old obvious smile. Alrighty, so now we need to figure out how on earth are we going to do these uh, yellows here? So, gosh, I'm just going to experiment here. I've got two different shades of yellow. Um, lemon yellow and titanium, unbleached titanium, which I assume is somehow different from titanium white. 
but uh, they're, they're rather similar colors. Titanium white is uh, very good when you're trying to lighten something. Okay, so let's use the unbleached titanium, see if that's at all good. So I'm not sure what color that is. That is, actually that's kind of perfect for the, the gray. See this little gray area, a little gray on her face, on her eyes. Yeah, so that'd be unbleached titanium. Maybe put on a little bit of actual gray. Got gray here. It's just a touch, just a little touch of gray. So you see I've got mostly, mostly the uh, lighter color, not the darker color. So I'm gonna mix them up with my uh, mixing thing. I don't know what you call it, but I call it a mixy thing. And that kind of changes the color. This is my problem when I use the mixy thingy. <laughs> yeah, all, all the color gets stuck to the mixy thingy and it doesn't so much get stuck into the uh, actual blob of paint I'm working with here. So try to scrape off the edges. You can see the edges there. Okay, that's a brush I haven't used for a while. Let me pull one of the brushes out of my cup of water, dry it off, dry it off. You know, this is definitely an old towel, old shirts. Um, ew, ew, oh no, this was clothing. Um, here's a neckband. Well, nobody's gonna wear this clothing again, <laughs> Not unless they wanted to make a really weird fashion statement. Okay. So, we're gonna do uh, her eyes and the top of her head. Interesting choice on the design, the game designer's part. It's like have this color right next to her eyes, because it's the same color. So it's like, why didn't you just remove that little line there and just fill in the whole thing once instead of having to fill it in twice? I don't know. I guess I really want to emphasize her eyebrows. We don't really see her eyebrows, but that's what these lines are. They're supposed to be like the forehead and stuff. Okay, so let's get her eyes in too. Try to be careful. I'm not feeling as careful as I could be. All righty, come on. Nice and sweet. Something you'll notice with her nose, um, in the game they put little lines at the bottom of her nose where her nostrils are. Two of them actually, they're kind of, well they're not that big, you don't really notice them, but when you have to draw them out for a painting, you're like, oh my gosh, that's a nose, all right. I didn't notice that she had nostrils. She doesn't have pupils. Well, I mean, she has the brown things. Anyway, um, that's it for her eyes. That's it for her eyes. And then everything else is going to be the uh, same sort of color. It's going to be the yellow. It's going to be that yellow that I was just trying to mix. Wow, these look really similar. I'm doing a great job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, you know, I've already got this uh, unbleached titanium yellow what was it again? This is the unbleached titanium. I think we just need to mix in some yellow here. I'll tell you what. I'm going to take about half of this. Like half of it. Not all of it. Just like half of it. Just half of that and mix it with yellow here. A bit more yellow than that. Because, you know, don't want the dark color to overrun the light color. So I'm trying to mix them up all nice and neat. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, there we go. That works really well. And it comes off more obvious in the painting than it does when you're mixing things up. But this is the same technique you use for, uh, you know, like when you're doing nature scenes or waterfall, you just add in a little bit of yellow as opposed to adding in a little bit of white to a lighten the color, it really makes makes a difference. And, and it looks natural because, you know, the sun is yellow-ish. Okay, so let's get another brush. Let's see. Um, what 
use this big one for the big area. I'll switch to a smaller brush once. How about that brush? That brush is hiding underneath my canvas the whole time, you sneaky little brush. Okay, so this one over here. You can see how it's very similar to the shade, but it's different. Like I said, I just mixed in a bunch of yellow with that exact same color, and what do you know? We've got a new color. Yeah, I like this. Get all around the edges. Kind of tough. Um, kind of tough to see though, because it's such a light color. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's use a sneaky little thing. Sneaky little one. I don't think there's any need to double load the brush. So I think double loading the brush is when I do it on one side and then the other. So I'm not really going to be painting up and down using both sides of the brush. I think I'm only going to use the one side of the brush. That gives me a bit more control. And of course, holding, you know, the brush up real close also gives you a lot more control over what you're doing. The uh, opposite technique is to hold your brush like this very far away. And that's for doing light touches, just very light touches like that, you know, for highlights and things like that. Something where you want to be pretty delicate. So those are painting techniques. keep messing up on the, the, the sharpie line there. That's okay, that's okay, it still looks great. Okay. Yeah, come on, I'm trying to get that really tiny area. There we go, got it, got it, got it. Just the tiniest of areas, isn't it? Alrighty. Almost done now. Not gonna do anything silly like draw a little mustache there. I didn't give myself enough room to actually draw a big bushy mustache. Maybe you should have a nice little curly mustache. I don't know. Anyway, uh, there we go. I think that's about it. So that is doing the Mona Lisa from Nancy Drew, Danger by Design. I think it actually turned out pretty darn well. It actually works. You can't do this in real life. What do you know? So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed seeing me paint the Mona Lisa.